Hi, it's Dwyer. July the 12th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's talk about one of boxing's most glamorous divisions. That's the middleweight division. Right, the division of Ketchel, Monzon, Triple G, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Brief overview, just some fighters I'm looking at. I'm not saying this list is exhaustive. Um, if you go to BoxRack.com this morning, you're going to see that somehow they are ranking Jamal Charlo as the top middleweight in the world. Right, folks? There's a problem with analyzing everything according to the numbers. Charlo's unbeaten. Charlo's barely been in the ring for years. Charlo's 34 years old. You have a group of middleweights out there who I feel would make quick work of Jamal Charlo. Right, so just understand, my list might not conform with boxing orthodoxy. What I'm going to say here might be controversial in some circles. Let's think about the outside coming into the pocket. Probably the best mover right now in the middleweight division. He's not even listed among the top middleweights at box rack. But it's Vincenzo Galtieri. Right, understand he had a share of the have, of the middleweight title until he faced Jeanabek Alan Cluley. Right? Gaultieri probably has the best legs in the division. He doesn't have the power. I'm not saying he's the best in the division. What I am saying though is that Erislan Lara used to have great legs. He's now forty one. Understand, Lara's real game these days, in my opinion, is in being a sniper, trying to set things up for a straight left. Let me also point out, too, that this division is interesting because it's left-hand dominant. Right? Hamza Shiraz is really a lefty who fights righty. He himself has said so. Right? That jab that he's throwing is with his dominant hand. Janabek, to me, is a Marvin Hagler figure. His straight left is one of the best punches in the entire sport, as is Lara's straight left. Right, so this division has a lot of lefties. The best mover is Galtieri. Let's get closer to the middle of the pocket now. Right, we're moving in from the outside. The guys who I think at certain ranges have advantages. Galtieri can move around you. Hamza Shiraz, if you don't force him from the lip of the pocket, you're going to get outboxed. You might get stopped. He has one of the best jabs in boxing. Right, this is a tall guy who is hard to reach. It's hard to get through his jab. Now, every time I mention his name, people want to tell me about him getting knocked down in a fight. Right? You know, I got news for you. Championship boxers, they all have tough moments. Wasn't that Joe Calzaghe, unbeaten Joe Calzaghe, legitimately on the canvas against an old man, Bernard Hopkins? Right? Revisit Floyd Mayweather's Zab Judah. You're going to see Mayweather's glove touches the canvas. The ref missed it. That was a knockdown. Ali knocked down by Joe Fraser. You might recall that. George Foreman knocked down face first, the second knockdown, against Ron Lyle. Right? So you show me a big, bad heavyweight. And I'll show you a guy, or a big bad boxer, and I'll show you a guy 
who has had tough moments. Right? In my opinion, all of these fighters have had a fight where fans are so unimpressed they doubt the guy. The Denzel Bentley fight involving Janabek. Right? All of these fighters have had tough moments. What I'm telling you is if a fight is fought at distance in the middleweight division, Hamza Shiraz will have the advantage. Let's move a little closer to the pocket. Jana Beck, in my opinion, is one of the fighters you have to have on your very short list of the best in the sport pound for pound. Right? This is the Southpaw who seems to be channeling Rocky Marciano. Right? He's hunched a little bit. He comes over to you. Not a lot of herky-jerky motion. It's not like he's trying to confuse you. Then he throws a straight left. He might as well turn around and leave the ring. The fight is over. Right? You have Janabek defending his title against Andre Mikhailovich. Let's talk about Mikhailovich. If you move even more in the pocket, right? Hamza Shiraz outside. Uh, Galtieri further outside than that. A mover. Then you have Hamza Shiraz. Then you have Janabek. Let's move into the Errol Spence part of the pocket where a guy is leaning on you and then moves back just enough to throw short hooks. We're not looking for the mid-range hooker here. We're looking for the smotherer, the short hooker, the guy who operates at short range to the point where he's leaning on you. That's Andre Mikhailovich. Right, folks, style-wise, this is a great fight. You know, while I believe that Jana Beck wins the fight, while I believe that Jana Beck is one of the very best pound-for-pound pound in boxing to the point where I don't even fault 41-year-old Eruslan Lara from avoiding, for avoiding him. Right? Because I get the feeling Lara would be badly hurt in that fight. Right? You're 41. You've had a career. You're on top, uh, at least with one sanctioning body. Why not milk that for as long as he can? Right? I think there's a recognition that when you lose to Janabek, you're destroyed. Right? Well, let me just say this. Janabek normally scares the daylights out of opponents. They don't want to deal with him, being close to him. This is that rare opponent who wants to be even closer to you than Janabek. In other words, this isn't going to be Galtieri galloping around the ring away from Janabek. And Janabek slowly trying to walk him down. No, this is different, folks. This is Janabek walking to an opponent, and the opponent, who's unbeaten himself, walking the genre back. There is the possibility that Mikhailovich smothers the angles. Right again, think Errol Spence. A great Errol Spence fight uh, is Errol Spence, Chris Algieri. Where Spence comes inside and you understand Algeria has nowhere to go. Well, here, Mikhailovich is going to try to do that to arguably the best in the division. Before I say another word, let me pivot here because it's important. There's a switch in the division. By a switch, I mean a guy who is advanced. 
You give him the outside, he'll stay outside. He'll destroy you. You invite him into the pocket for a shootout, he'll come in the pocket. He'll destroy you. Right? The guy is urbane. He's well-spoken. Just understand, in terms of being able to change styles, this guy, to me, is one of the most dangerous fighters in boxing. I am very excited by the idea of Canelo fighting Chris Eubank. Right? What I want people to do is to Look at Eubank against Avni Yildura. My interpretation of that fight, and we all see what we want to see, right? We all have different interpretations. My interpretation of that fight is that Eubank realizes that Yildura can only fight on his front foot. So Eubank does something that's interesting. You don't see it that often. Eubank decides he'll have the shootout with the guy. Eubank, who is devastating on his front foot, decides he's going to be on his back foot and he's going to work in the world of sequencing. By that I mean, Yildurum comes forward, I believe Eubank, like Salvador Sanchez against Wilfredo Gomez. Look at that fight. I believe Eubank realized that Yildurum was so robotic, in fact his nickname was the robot, that Eubank figured out that he could have the upper hand in the sequence of any shootout exchange in that fight. In other words, Yildurum starts throwing punches Eubank figured out that if he could parry the first shot, he could then dictate the sequencing. And I believe he beats Yildurum off the sequencing. Right? Gets the stoppage, isn't afraid of a slugger in the pocket, has the diversified game where he could pick whether he was going to stay in the pocket or be on his back foot. Right, let's just say, I know I know we lost the first Liam Smith fight. Judge a fighter by how he recovers in the rematch. Dominated the rematch. Understand that first Liam Smith fight is so misleading because Eubank, before that fight, had never been on the canvas. I think it's just an act of divine intervention that Eubank ends up with Terence Crawford's trainer, right? Because, of course, as I've been saying here for years, Crawford is a different guy every fight. Here you have Eubank, who can be a different guy in different rounds of the fight. And they're both with the same trainer, right? So, into that mix, we have this fight. Mikhailovich... Perhaps the very best, very deep in the pocket in the division, right? As I've said, this is the guy who can lean on you. Think Roberto Duran, right? He's not just comfortable trading with you at mid-range, right? Like Danny Garcia is. No, this is the guy who literally is okay with a wrestling match, only he's boxing. Skilled leaners will lean on you this way, right? They'll have a left shoulder up on you. Then they'll move the shoulder back, and as your body falls forward, they'll throw a short right hand. Now, all I can say is styles make fights. I do consider Janabek to be a dominant champion. I wonder what happens if he fights Hamza Shiraz, who I consider to be an elite prospect, right? I do wonder. But understand, here, I also recognize that as good as Janabek is, and folks, he's excellent, there are a lot of people who just can't handle a short-range hooker. 
Now the casino is giving you better than nine to one. It's crazy. <laughs> They're giving you better than nine to one on Mikhailovich. Right? Let me point out that the casino believes that there's going to be a stoppage in this fight. The over-under is a very low five and a half rounds. Folks, this is high risk. I'm just going to tell you how I'm playing it. I believe boxing is very competitive. I have a hard time going above a plus 300. If you're going to give me a plus 900 on a guy with the power that Mikhailovich has and the unique skill set that he has deep in the pocket where he has to get to have a chance against Janabek. If you're going to give me these odds, I'm going to take them. So the bet I've taken is Mikhailovich simply to win at greater than a plus 900, hedged with the over five and a half rounds. Right? My feeling is that Janabek can't walk this guy down. Right? Understand, even Crawford had to jab his way in against Errol Spence. When a guy is as adept, very deep in the pocket, as Mikhailovich is, you need to spend at least a couple of rounds just looking at the guy, just seeing the angles, waiting for an entry point, trying to figure out if there's an entry point. I did add a little bit of gravy and took Janabek in rounds four to six. Right? They gave me a little bit less than a plus 300 on those odds. Right? So what I'm hoping is that the first three rounds are feel-out rounds. Then we get to the real action that's going to be so combustible that somebody gets a stoppage. Right? Because I'm covered on the Mikhailovich side of the play with a plus 900, if either guy gets the stoppage, after the start of the fourth round, I'm good. But if the heavy favorite, Janabek, wins the fight by decision, I lose it all. So again, I like Mikhailovich greater than plus 900. Right, folks? If it's there, you might as well throw the long ball. Right? He has a much better chance than a 1 in 10 of winning the fight, right? This is greater than a nine to one, right? That means if these guys were to, get, you know, to fight 10 times at current odds, the expectation would be that Janabek would be 21 and 0 Mikhailovich, nine out of 10 times. I think Janabek's a great fighter, but I'm not buying that, right? I like the over five and a half, but you need to understand what that means. That's the midway point of the sixth round. That's five full rounds and half of the next. Because the odds allow it, because there's a plus 900 in the mix, and because I know that Janabek is a quick study, if he figures out how to throw that straight left, you're finished. Right? I've added Janabek in rounds four through six, right? But to be as blunt as possible, if Janabek wins by stoppage in round four or round five, I pretty much break even, right? It's only if he wins in the, you know, first part, well, put it put it this way. I pretty much break even if Janabek wins in rounds four to six. Apart from that, I have the over five and a half rounds in the fight. And I have um, the underdog at greater than nine to one. That's how I'm playing it, folks. This is going to be a fight fought in the mid to the interior of the pocket. In other words, Mikhailovich believes, and he might be right. 
that he'll have the advantage if he makes it a very close fight where he gets to lean on Janabek. Janabek, of course, he's unbeaten himself, feels that no one can take his straight left and that he's a master at hiding his hands and throwing it when you're unprepared for it. There's not a lot of wasted movement with Janabek. Right? I think this is an interesting fight. Erislandi Lara has a similar straight left hand. Um, I believe Lara and Janabek both have two of the best punches in the entire sport. They're straight lefts. Right? That's how I see this fight. Let me hear from you in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.